I now give the floor to the representative of Israel. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, yesterday the Ayatollah regime, in blatant violation of the UN Charter and, inter and international law, attacked, attacked the State of Israel and launched 170 UAVs, 120 ballistic missiles, and 30 cruise missiles carrying 60 tons of explosive materials at Israel. This attack was launched from Iranian soil, as well as from Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. Colleagues, from the moment I began my tenure here, in every speech and in countless letters, I rang the warning bell regarding Iran. I called on this council to take concrete action against the Ayatollah regime. I made it clear that Iran and its hegemonic ambitions of global domination must be stopped before it drives the world to a point of no return, to a regional war that can escalate to a world war. Sadly, no action was taken, and last night the world witnessed an unprecedented escalation that serves as the clearest proof for what happens when warnings aren't heeded. Israel is not the boy who cried wolf. We have been screaming from the rooftops for years, trying to wake up the international community, but to no avail. If only this council would have inter internalized my words, it would not have needed the bone-rattling explosions of last night's attack to wake it up. Colleagues, last night, Iran proved again that it cares nothing, nothing for Islam or Muslims. The Iranian attack seriously injured Amina El Khassouni, a seven-year-old Bedouin girl in Israel. But look at this video that shows how Israel intercepts Iranian drones above the Temple Mount and Al-Aqsa Mosque. Here, you can look at it. This is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. To Iran, Israel's annihilation and igniting the region is more important than Islamic holy sites. The Ayatollah regime, in its plot to impose a global Shiite hegemony throughout its proxies, through its proxies, has even attacked Saudi Arabia, as we all remember, Aramco oil field, the United Arab Emirates, and anyone, anyone else they view as an obstacle. I ask the Algerian representative here, how does this make you feel? Is this a price you support, attempting to blow up mosques and murdering Muslims? Yet, while this direct Iranian attack on Israel was the first of its kind, it is just the most recent chapter in a blood-soaked saga that started from the moment the Islamic Revolution reared its head. The Ayatollah regime has a clear plan. Its goal has been and continues to be world domination by exporting its radical Shiite revolution across the globe. I assume you all know it. The Islamic regime of today is no different than the Third Reich. And Ayatollah Khamenei is no different than Adolf Hitler. Hitler's Third Reich was envisioned to be a thousand-year empire stretching across continents, just as Khamenei envisions his radical Shiite hegemony to stretch across the region and beyond. This is why Iran arms themselves with intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, Iran and Israel are on the same continent. You are next. The Ayatollah regime acts like the Nazi regime, and their army includes Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, the Houthis, the Revolutionary Guard, and other savage jihadists. Instead of shouting, Sieg Heil, these radical Nazi Islamists scream, death to Israel, death to America, death to England, just like the Nazi regime, the Ayatollah regime saws death and destruction everywhere it touches. 
For the past years, Ukrainian civilians have been killed from the skies with Iranian weaponry. President Zelensky, in condemnation of Iran's attack last night, said, and I quote, the sound of Iranian Shahed drones, a tool of terror, is the same in the skies over the Middle East and Europe. This sound must serve as a wake-up call to the free world. Listen to President Zelensky and wake up. Just like the ever-reaching hand of the Wehrmacht, Iran struck Albania with cyber attacks and launches strikes against Kurds in Iraq. We all remember the 2021 attack on the oil tanker Mercer Street in which British and Romanian crew members were killed. And just yesterday, Iran seized a Portuguese cargo ship. The crew be being held right now by Iran includes Indian, Filipino, Pakistani, and Russian nationals. Iran threatens global maritime trade. Iran is not only a terror state, Iran is a pirate state. Colleagues, just this week, the court in Argentina held Iran directly responsible for the 1994 terror attack in Buenos Aires on the Jewish Community Center, which killed 85 people and wounded 300. And just like the Third Reich and their brutal SS officers, the Iranian regime not only spreads evil abroad, but also torments and murders their own citizens. In 2023 alone, the Ayatollah regime executed 834 Iranians. The regime oppresses women while murdering them for not wearing their hijab properly. When the Iranian people peacefully protest this brutality, they are suppressed by live ammunition. Hundreds of protesters were killed and thousands have been arrested. This is a regime that allows its own people to die of thirst in Isfahan, while it funds terror around the world with billions of dollars. What have you done to defend the world from Iran? Seriously, the entire globe is suffering from Iran, including the Iranian people. Please defend them. For years, the world has watched, has watched the rise of a Shiite Islamist Reich, yet just like during the rise of Nazism, the world has been silent, deafeningly silent. Mr. Secretary General, Iran has been violating Security Council resolutions and the UN Charter for years. They supply Hezbollah with weapons in violation of resolutions 1559 and 1701. They advance weapons proliferation in violation of resolution 2231. They violate resolutions 1540 and 2216. Why have you not used all possible means to condemn Iran and demand compliance? Why have you instead rolled out the red carpet for these genocidal jihadists? Why do you treat them as if they are interested in de-escalation when you know that the opposite is true? Colleagues, Iran's strategy has been crystal clear. Arm, fund, and train terror proxies across the globe to carry out Iran's murderous scheme of domination. But today, the mask of Iranian deniability has been removed. No more hiding and no more bluffing. No more shirking of responsibility. Iran has attacked Israel from its own sovereign territory, publicly and proudly. The mask is off. Iran, the number one global sponsor of terror, has exposed its true face as the destabilizer of the region and the world. And now, right now, is when the world must stop ignoring Iran's crimes and take action. As Iran's mask has fallen, the world's comp complacency must also fall. The mask comes off and the gloves must come on. The snooze button is no longer an option. The only option is to condemn Iran and utilize every means necessary to make them pay a heavy price for their horrible crimes. Iran and its axis of supporters must be shown that the civilized world will no longer stay, stand idle. While many countries immediately condemned the attack, those who did not must ask themselves, how do you want history 
to remember you. Council members, last night's attack was a blatant violation of international law and the UN Charter. It was an act of utter escalation that can drag the entire region and world into war. But can you imagine if the attack was carried out under, under an Iranian nuclear umbrella? Or if, or if some of, the Iran's, of Iran's missiles had nuclear warheads? The regime that launched an unprecedented strike on Israel, a fellow member state of the UN, is barreling towards nuclear capabilities. This is a terror state responsible for global destruction, and soon they will have nuclear capabilities. You all know that Iran is systematically violating the JCPOA and has enriched uranium up to 60% purity and even more. Iran's breakout time to produce an arsenal of nucle nuclear weapons is now weeks, mere weeks. No concrete action has been taken, and the IAEA inspectors have been kept in the dark. Iran is on the verge of becoming a nuclear power. It should terrify every member of this council. Take a moment to think what would happen if Ayatollah Khamenei could have launched a nuclear bomb last night. Is this the world we want to live in? So to the JCPOA signatories, I say, initiate the snapback mechanism today. Initiate it. Impose all possible sanctions on Iran before it's too late. We need a world led by Churchills, not Chamberlains. Colleagues, on October 7th, Hamas, with Iranian funding, with Iranian weaponry, with training, carried out the most brutal massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. They slaughtered our children. They burned entire communities. They raped our women. They took families hostage and are abusing 133 hostages. Hezbollah, with its Iranian arms and sponsorship, have fired thousands of rockets into Israel since October 7th, decimating towns. The Houthis, with Iranian weapons and instructions and intelligence, are firing at every merchant vessel that is suspected of having ties to Israel. And then Iran, who directs and pays for all of this violence, carried out an attack of epic proportions on Israel. Colleagues, we are being fired upon from all fronts, from every border. We are surrounded by Iran's terror proxies. The war in Gaza extends far broader than Israel and Hamas. All of the terror groups attacking Israel are tentacles, tentacles of the same Shiite octopus, the Iranian octopus. So I ask you, and be honest with yourselves, what would you do? What would you do if you were in Israel's shoes? How would you react if your existence was threatened every single day? While the Ayatollah regime thinks, they only think that Israel is a frog in a boiling water, that we are becoming accustomed to the threats on our survival and won't, won't notice until it's too late, they are wrong. You are wrong. This attack crossed every red line, and Israel reserves the legal right to retaliate. We are not a frog in boiling water. We are a nation of lions. Following such a massive and direct attack on Israel, the entire world, let alone Israel, cannot settle for inaction. We will defend our future. Colleagues, despite the magnitude of the attack, 99% of Iran's UAVs and missiles were intercepted by Israel and our allies. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the United States and our partners for standing with us in defending Israel against the Ayatollah regime indiscriminate attacks. Yet, the fact that Israel's air defense proved to be superior does not change the brutality of the Iranian attack. Iran can no longer hide behind its proxies. It has now exposed itself as the terror exporting pariah state that it is. 
and it must, from now on, be treated as such. It's not enough to remove Iran from the UN Commission on the Status of Women. Iran is the world's worst human rights violator, and such a regime cannot hold any UN position. No more red carpet treatment here at the UN. No more appeasement. Today, the Council must take action. Condemn Iran for their terror, trigger the snapback mechanism, and reimpose crippling sanctions Designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terror organization. Action must be taken now, not for Israel's sake, not for the region's sake, but for the world's sake. Stop Iran today. Thank you, Madam President.